get started uh, a very warm welcome to all of you on the webinar for career paths in business analytics my name is gaurav adishin and uh, i am the host for today's session uh, this is a brief introduction about me i have been working into data science uh, for close to 10 years now i have worked with multiple clients uh, including walmart uh, homan connected services uh, and fidelity and wipro i have uh, around 10 years of experience in working with strategic consulting project management statistical modeling and machine learning projects i also have an mba in marketing strategy from i am bangalore and a post graduation in data science and ml from cmu along with the engineering degree from kiit so uh, i want to set few expectations before we move ahead uh, if i get disconnected because of any technology reasons i'll log log in back uh, in few few seconds if you have any questions you may not have access right now to switch on your mic if you have any questions you feel free to put it in the chat box i'll take all the questions as and when it comes out so uh, let me set the agenda for the session we are going to talk about who are we first uh, and uh, you know what are the uh, different kinds of initiatives we are working on and uh, we'll also talk about some of the applications of data science across uh, different domains and functions the idea is to brief you on uh, to demystify the the entire meaning of data science and business analytics what how it is different what it takes to become a data scientist what are the different job roles available in the market and how can you take a step by step approach to enter into this field okay so uh, one second i'm getting a lot of people are still joining so so we are part of learnx uh, it's a it's an srm group company it's an online arm of srm group and we provide uh, you know digital education in the space of data science and other emerging technologies our our positioning or i would say our sole motive in the you know in the space of education is to be more idea is how can you develop that competency and skills which are most demanding in the industry uh, all the future skills you know where we are seeing a lot of growth how can you really leverage that opportunity to enter into the field okay so as i said we are a digital brand company and we help empower people to achieve their dreams to education uh we believe in uh, you know providing the cutting edge learning so we 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 have a good combination of content or a blend of content and technology to simplify learning the entire idea is to create that experience for any learner so that he or he or she can can fulfill its job expectations we also have a focus on uh, innovative methods of learning and nowadays because of the covid pandemic a uh, lot of disruption is happening in the education as you all see that entire traditional models are getting washed off and new models are emerging in and some of it we are not uh, uh, you know it's not it's not like that we are not familiar with online and digital education a lot of learning uh, you know across disciplines across uh, different uh, stages of your learning life will now move to the online mode right but will the online mode become the only uh, model i doubt so right there will i think we'll be end up, you know we'll end up using a combination of traditional methods and technology to impart learning now this is what we have uh, since we are part of the srm group we have a strong university accreditation we have strong product portfolio across different programs uh, the industry curriculum aligned with industry experts uh we cover the you know we have an extensive coverage across tools and obviously the job focused learning path so how can you get job ready right the entire goal is that if i do i a, a, a particular learning if i want to enter into this space what kind of tangible outcomes i will get okay so i'll quickly just go through this uh, you know we since because of university pedigree we have a very strong placement team which allows us to you know build that portfolio and use our existing uh, connects and contacts and partnerships uh, we have faculties so again uh, the, the 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 one big area or i would say the heart and soul of any learning is who is facilitating the learning so obviously you know being part of srm group we have a very strong pedigree of universities and uh, you know and faculties uh we have you know we have uh, good external certification models uh, which you'll find which will be very useful when you get into jobs 
and some of the delivery framework you know so I'll, i'm going to skip that but yes we follow very hands on cutting edge technology to impart learning we leverage our alumni network we arrange sessions and uh, th this is going to be an ecosystem rather than one of the transactional ways of learning right and that's what we provide as a part of learnext okay uh, this is about srm group uh, we have education media and technology and and other other segments and uh, we have these many campuses uh, you know the srm university has campuses across uh, the country some of the campuses are listed here now you all know about srm chennai uh, i don't need to really really describe that it's one of the best in the country uh, it has been rated as rank 1 in, in some of the rankings uh, we you know it's a plus plus grade and you know one one of the prestigious universities in the country uh, you know this is our, our edge we have trained uh, thousands of students uh, you know in last few years are you know strong advisory board our mau mous our uh, patents you know all that proof to a good testament of our uh, you know of our competencies of our own way of teaching it to the students okay uh, this is another university by srm srm ap one of the leading schools in the country universities in the country offered uh, across different disciplines and programs then uh, we have it in sonipat also in haryana and yeah some of the international partnerships so why i am bringing this up that you know some of it you will end up using while you know you take up one of the degree programs from srm now let's move it to uh, this question we'll park this question for now uh, is a degree in analytics worth it right and we'll come back to this question maybe after 20 30 minutes uh, once we take the q and a part right so let's try to understand what is analytics uh, you know this has been a term you know used frequently by multiple people you know uh, i would say one of the most popular words and uh, uh, sometimes becomes one of the most complex words to analyze because many people come with different expectations uh, uh, with different understanding and perspective uh, but let's try to simplify this at least by the end of the session uh, if you want to take away a few things from the session there are two things you should understand right what is this space about right uh, what is analytics and what what value it can add to organizations then what do i need to do uh, to get into this field right if you're looking for a career in data science business analytics and ml and ai if you're able to get answers for these two questions i think this session would be worth right so let's define what's analytics uh, so after working for so many years uh, you know i have sort of carved out uh, one of my own definition uh, uh, which is uh, which goes like this it's a very structured and streamlined method uh, to analyze historical data to to take data driven decisions right so there are three parts to it it's a very structured and streamlined method why do you need a structured and streamlined method anyone can answer that uh, why why it has become so much important right now to use a very structured approach let's make it little more engaging uh, i think all of us have been working across uh, uh, you know the country and across the globe uh, working virtually so if you can answer that question why do you think you need a structured and streamlined approach to do uh, data science okay so because uh, so jeet verma is saying because it's very useful and user uh, friendly interface okay interesting so uh, one one basic reason is the kind of chaos what we are living in right we we are generating data on a daily basis right if you if you go back to the basics of uh, uh, unstructured data or any uh, high volumes of data that's where the concept of big data has been coined there are three words to it volume velocity and variety so volume is one challenge which we have been facing because we have been generating a lot of data the the acquisition cost of storage has gone down drastically you remember the days where uh, people used to pay thousands of dollars to uh, acquire databases now it's it's available for you know for for very very uh, nominal values now second is velocity right when you create a database uh, it's no more will be you know it will become redundant uh, after few weeks 
because we are generating huge amounts of data on a daily basis. So the incremental load which is happening on a daily basis is huge. So if you create a terabyte, two terabyte or one terabyte database, it will become outdated uh, because you have another, you know, another uh, terabyte coming up next week or maybe next day. So it's very important to be agile in that scenario, right? How can you really adapt to that situation and create a database which can acquire uh, you know, large volumes of data? So, uh, you know, so volume and variety goes hand in hand. Uh, sorry, volume and velocity goes go hand in hand because uh, of the load and the incremental load and the data generation capacity what we are in. Third is variety. So there was a time we have been only generating transactional data. So what I mean by transactional data, uh, it's a simple POS data, point of sale data. If you see which can be stored into RDBMS structure to simplify it further, which can be stored into rows and columns. Now, will you be able to store every form of data now into rows and columns? Answer is resounding no, right? It can't be done. Uh, because of a simple reason, uh, we are not generating only text data or numeric data. We are generating far more varieties now. It can be a you know, text data, it can be, you know, your photo, what you upload in, in Facebook, your post, what you do in Instagram and Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, and you write a lot of content. How is it being stored? Uh, because when you try to access the data, you get it instantly. If it is being stored in different columns, rows and columns, it's become very hard to pull out the system. There's a, there's a huge possibility of uh, data loss. Uh, there will be possibility of communication loss. Right? So to avoid those methods, you need a structured and streamlined approach of storing the data first. Right? Once you do that, then you need to analyze that. Uh, you know, once you use that approach, why do you use that approach? So that you can analyze that historical data. Now, in data science, the first word self is data. So data is the, of course, data is the backbone for this. So you need to have uh, uh, historical data. Now, to answer this question that if I start a new business, I will, may not have any data. Will I be able to do data science? Answer is both yes and no, depending on the situation. If you are into a similar sort of a situation where another company is doing something and you're able to pull out that data and do some level of mapping with you, you'll be able to take some rational decisions. But most number of times, uh, data is the backbone and it's very important to understand what had happened. And that's the whole world of business intelligence where the industry have been moving towards to do that, uh, to answer the problem, what ha had happened and what went wrong, right? Now, the second piece is, why do you want to do store and analyze? It's not your hobby. So that whenever you take any decisions, it's based on data. So decisions can be taken by two ways. One, of course, is a gut feeling, intuition, which we all go with. Correct. It's it's very important uh, uh, that 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 piece also remains. But businesses cannot run on gut feeling, and you know the kind of uh, disruption is going, and the kind of changes what we are going through. It's very important to be on top of that. So data allows you to take some decisions. So that's why you do data driven decision making. Because it's more concrete, it's more accurate, and it gives you a lot of evaluation metrics, right? Where where you look at accuracy measures, precision. You try to identify that what's the probability of happening this event at what percentage. So data-driven decision-making is going to be the culture in most of the uh, modern age organizations. And I think it's not a surprise. Uh, many organizations are trying to build a data culture. They, they are talking about this term. You may have heard it in your organization. How can, you, how can we become data smart? How can we develop a data smart culture in the organization? Now, all of this is somewhere tied to the entire model of data science because, because the kind of usability it provides, I don't think so any other technology has been able to do it. And uh, you know the best part of this is, which I will cover it in the next slide, it is fairly domain agnostic. Uh, it can be applied across domains and functions. Uh, it's not very biased towards one of the domain. Obviously, the applications what you see in some of the domains are being adopted on a more frequent basis. But having said that, uh, there is no restriction where I can apply analytics in one of the industries that can't be applied across other industries. So that's what analytics mean. And that's why it's very important. How can you analyze what had happened? Use that 
to take another information what will happen now that's that's not the end of the story how will how will it happen is also important now if you are working for walmart i'll, I'll take my you know example in from my past employer if i'm working on a recommendation engine and i say that uh, you know you have to uh, run uh, 2% discount on your uh, on your particular category now the, uh, it will give you you know 1% of incremental growth or maybe 1% of top line growth in your company so i'm trying to address two things you will get 1% of top line growth by doing what if you run a 2% discount on your particular product or on a particular category so what will happen and how will it ha- how will it happen are two most important ingredients of data science in technical terms you call them as predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics the first one what we are talking about uh, what had happened is fairly descriptive in nature and that's where the entire world of business intelligence fits in now why analytics uh, do i really need to answer this question uh, everyone knows about it uh now obviously uh, there is a huge demand supply gap so there is a lot of demand happening in the industry they want to build this competency they want to develop organizations to become data smart they are not finding right set of people uh, who can actually do that uh, there are you know there are a bunch of programmers there are a bunch of bi experts but you need to put all the pieces together to 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 become a data scientist so they get one of these aspects but they don't get the other one so does that mean that you need to know everything in data science absolutely no yeah obviously you cannot know any you know anything and everything about one particular field but there are few skills which you can acquire to enter in this field so there are some acquired skills which i will talk about later that what are the skills which you can acquire to enter in this field but this why analytics because of obviously high paying jobs and enough number of jobs if if you know just to summarize this slide now you know if you look at salaries uh, i think you you guys would have done your enough research to know about it but just to give you a background average salaries can go for a fresher can go between 6 to 8 lakhs for a person with 4 or 5 years of experience he can look at between 15 to 20 lakhs and there are instances uh, where people with more than 8 years of experience are making north of 30 lakhs so uh, you know so obviously uh, you know this is this is a very high paying job why do companies pay so much to these guys because they save them billions of dollars they save them millions of dollars in some cases if you're working for a larger organization like walmart and uh, you know amazon you may end up you know, end up saving them billions of dollar over over a period of time so that's why because you 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 help them to take decisions which are going to be effective and you tell them what is the percentage of success to that decision obviously it's not uh, you know it's not a magic uh, many people do call it it's very magical it uh, it's not it, it's 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 fairly fairly process driven it's it's a very scientific approach which you take to uh, to to reach to those conclusions and that's why you know cxos buy this uh, they don't buy what uh, data scientist is saying they just buy it once they once they see what's happening across uh, my business and these things will help me to grow in my business so that is one primary reason uh, you know the salary is high another part is uh, you know it is a simple demand supply problem also right when you don't have enough people so everyone is fighting to hire data scientist now if they don't pay them well uh, obviously they will not stay so it's very important that they pay them well uh, you know so that they can have that talent in house rather than and and you see a lot of attrition happens you know in it industry because of the the pay grades and all because too many options available in the, in the, in the market but that's not the case uh, you know in data science uh, in it sector you find the supply is also on the higher side we are churning out uh, lakhs of engineer uh, on a uh, every year uh, but i don't think so we are churning lakhs of data scientist every year but that's the demand for the data scientist right uh, now let's try to understand what are the different applications of data science uh, just give me a minute uh, many still like can see there are few people joining uh, i would request navin if you can allow them to join the i can see, i'm getting notification for that uh okay so let's move on uh, let's try to pick up some of the obvious and non obvious fields uh, finance uh, one of the interesting field uh, you know because it's all about money now they uh, 
they use it across means you know starting from the customer acquisition to customer retention and then service delivery uh, engagement they use it across but some of the key projects what they work on uh, is to understand if if i'm working on a particular budget planning what is my revenue forecast if i'm working in finance now if i have to do some cost allocation uh if i am the head of finance uh, can i use a metric so they use financial metrics but they use financial modeling which is combined with some of the machine learning techniques also or statistical modeling techniques also to give them some better results right in banking uh, uh you look at two major aspects one is fraud detection uh, because of the uh, you know the number of transaction happening across uh, the country by one of take an example of hdfc credit card the uh, millions of transaction happening simultaneously how can they track fraud uh, obviously they can't deploy 10 people to track it they need to have a machine in place they need to have a a smart automated machine in place which can tell them that this particular transaction can be a potential fraud uh, now so the, the way they do it uh, they they use that particular information this you know try to understand the, the historical transactions and see if there is any sort of mismatch or any sort of misalignment while that transaction particular transaction happens now you do a transaction in bangalore and suddenly you do a transaction and when i say uh, transaction i'm talking about physical transaction you are actually going to a store and swiping your card now you did one transaction at one of the grocery stores in bangalore and next two hours you are in delhi it's 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 physically not possible that transaction happened it means it turned out to be a fraud so there are uh, checks and balances running there are algorithms running which are you know able to identify those problems in transport uh, the third example how can you uh, you know look at uh, car monitoring system look at uh, ai enabled devices in transport uh, tesla is one example you know in, in transport uh, they use ai enabled car self automated car they use a lot of uh, data around it and then try to find out uh, you know the right path the right speed the distance so that uh, you know the system can run efficiently another example is in manufacturing right from supply chain inventory planning inventory optimization demand forecast you name it they use they use it very heavily it's a very labor intensive job so even a loss of productivity you know one hour loss of productivity may cost them millions because there are thousands of worker working and uh, if they one of the assembly lines is failing and the number of units uh, went down by 10% supposedly uh th- it will cost them uh, millions so it's very important to understand that uh, even looking at the entire efficiency of the uh, you know, of, of the existing workforce looking at the supply chain management if they have to ship a product where should they ship the product do they follow a centralized warehouse model or a distributed warehouse model what does it mean should i have uh, if i am i run uh, suppose i i i'm a owner of a, a tractor based company take an example of mahindra and mahindra so should i create an, uh, a warehouse in only in bombay or should i have distributed warehouse that's one problem statement for the business now they have to look at cost time allocation supply and all these metrics these becomes the variable to decide it and sometimes you know and sometimes they based on the you know once once they run these algorithms they, they are able to take a decision that in some of the locations centralized warehouse make more sense in some of the geographies i need to have distributed warehouses e-commerce uh, right from identity you know as soon as you enter into the field as soon as you look at uh, the consumer behavior it you know all together you are being surrounded by you know data science algorithms believe me if you shop on uh, flipkart if you shop on amazon or snapdeal or any other uh, e-commerce channel they really know what triggers you they really know what will you buy at what cost so they run uh, promotions you see that most of the products in e-commerce industry uh, are at discounted price yeah some of it are genuine ones some of it can be put into question but they understand the consumer behavior that a person who sees discount sees values in the product and you know he sees one concept of saving that's from a purely transactional angle and look at the strategic model to it when you buy one product you ended up buying multiple other product because they provide a recommendation so the a parallel recommendation engine is running to help you to shortlist some of the product and most number of times it's correct 
because they it turned out to be they understand your buying patterns and your your likes and dislikes and it's not only you it they study you know thousands and uh, tens of thousands of uh, users to uh, come to that conclusion the the third part is uh, they provide you bundled products people who bought this also bought that right so along with the recommendations which can be totally different they offer you similar uh bundle products uh, which goes hand in hand right that's an that's an algorithm by the way if you want to know the name it's it's a priori algorithm it's called association rule mining it's uh, solely based on market basket analysis that's the business term to it and that's how they create that uh, system healthcare you know i think uh, very very contemporary topic uh, we have been seeing drug discovery clinical trials uh, we are looking at uh, you know uh, virtual assistants uh, it's one one big best, best example if you see there was a case where a robot has been able to predict the cancer rate better than a better than an experienced doctor uh, so i am not saying that doctor should be replaced by robots but i am trying to say that the kind of efficiency it can generate if you are able to build that i think we'll be able to solve multiple health problems because we also know that there is scarcity of doctor many doctors are not able to attend patients if we develop some set, you know similar set of intelligence we can't obviously overpower human uh, but if you can develop some similar you know similar sort of intelligence into a machine and it can help you at least to do the the disease prediction i think that that's a well you know well job done and that's where you know you you really sense and uh, uh, you know you you bring that flavor of data science and and try to solve some of these complex problems so complex problem solving uh, is uh, another uh, you know term to it how can you solve complex problems data science is the answer now let's take some interesting example uh, swiggy you know we talk about swiggy right they they give you so much of uh, you know recommendations uh, they talk about they understand about your taste they understand what kind of cuisines you will like and they do a lot of targeted promotions based on that they churn out tons of data on a daily basis till they are you know they are able to give you right recommendations they are able to understand uh, the shortest delivery path so that you get you know you still get the foods uh, served hot and also the entire user experience it's it's completely based on uh, you know understanding uh the concept of data science that if i have to use a particular uh, you know merchandising or if i have to use a particular location what what are my different drop points uh, how would you allocate a particular agent how how does it happen it's a shortest distance path but when you talk about uh, hundreds of uh, delivery boys roaming around the same uh, you know in the same location they still use some mechanism and that mechanism is is based on the applications of data science they also help uh, you know treat every customer unique that doesn't mean they create th those many number of models the, they actually work on a segmentation similar set of customers based on buying pattern you know purchasing pattern uh, or i would say taste right that's what kind of cuisines if i like italian and there are many people like me who will like italian you can that can be one of the attributes to segment a customer uh interesting topic ipl uh, one of the i uh, know i would recommend uh, there is a movie called moneyball uh, it's not really based on cricket but it's based on a sport it's based on uh, on baseball uh, one of the oldest implementation of data science many people talk about banking uh, many people talk about uh, you know retail and e-commerce but one of the oldest implementation of data science was in baseball okay and there was a complete movie made on that uh, moneyball uh, you know brad pitt brad, brad pitt's movie excellent movie you should go and watch if you have not but that really talks about how can you create a winning combination on under what circumstances a team can win what are the different values by which i can decide the winning percentage and you know similar thing has been deployed across different sports cricket is another example uh, players performance statistics uh, performance against a particular bowler on a particular ground in a particular weather condition right can i figure it out so again we are, we are dealing with very complex data here we are dealing with huge amounts of information here how would you put together a piece together and come up, make sense out of it so data science will help you to make sense out of it uh you know this is interesting uh, walmart has created an intelligent retail lab by which you can actually understand uh, 
you know we look at a camera based uh, product buying right select a product and then we'll give you recommendations based on that there's no person who is doing it it's completely an intelligent device which takes care of it they have actually created a ai powered store uh, which will allow uh, you know to have a complete different user experience in the space of e-commerce and retail okay uh bfsi banking we talked about uh, you know it talks about customer acquisition talks about uh, uh, portfolio management risk analytics fraud analytics across across the world now let's go back to the question uh, uh, what we asked is degree worth in data science but before that uh, if anyone has any questions feel free to ask okay so saurav is asking how is data analyst different from business analytics okay so data analyst is a role uh, business analytics is a field field of study uh, what i understood you are trying to ask how data analyst is different from a business analyst now if you look at uh, the previous model uh, or uh, if you look at the previous designation there was a designation i don't know whether it's still there or not uh business analyst was a proper designation given to people for requirement gathering so their job was simple you work with the client understand the requirement gather the data and pass it on to the delivery team so they are working as a bridge between the you know the the client and the delivery team and most number of time they work on some of the data modeling uh, you know data modeling is not data science modeling data modeling uh, uh, is is more of creating those tabular structure and all data analyst is also a similar sort of a role which is more of churning out data you know building on charts uh, looking on uh, doing, doing some level of historical analysis doing some level of uh, descriptive analytics both of these roles are not focused on predictive and prescriptive analytics these are uh, one of it is a purely business role uh, related to requirement gathering another is purely bi role where you just need get tons of data and you will be asked that tell me what are the different missing values what are the anomalies if you have to work on data anomalies you can also find out find out that so use different data exploratory techniques uh, you know which will help you to uh, identify you know the challenges in the data so that you can you can work on it and, and solve the problem that's the job of a data analyst data scientist you know is is multiple steps further i can't say one step further uh, data scientist is it's a combination of both art and science if you go back to the basics of data science there is a there is an art component there is a science component art comes from the business knowledge and the domain knowledge what you acquire over a period of time that will help you to get some sense out of data because you know the business because if a variable is not known to you you can't really make sense out of anything that which were able to take which were able to drop if you don't understand the business second is a science part which is more of scientific method to work on statistical modeling and machine learning techniques some of the techniques you know fairly used techniques i can tell you linear regression is one of the uh, most popular uh, you know one of the most popular uh, uh, forecasting technique you have k means clustering one of the most popular uh, segmentation techniques you have random forest neural network support recommendation so that's the scientific part where you use certain modeling techniques use certain programming tools now programming tools uh, i don't know whether we can all switch on the poll i have few questions anyways for you guys navin if you can open up the first question uh, let's try to understand uh, uh, you know after this session uh, what do you uh, how do you really perceive this data science as a, as a as a word as an industry right so here's a poll for you uh, is data science all about programming before i answer this question i want to know it from you guys okay uh, i still have uh, i think not all of you have responded um, considering we have a huge set of people joined this uh, webinar okay but i think we are good uh, 60% 63% i am i'm reaching towards 70 so let's wait towards 70 i'm trying to gather some data so i can give you some insights on that okay but it's very much clear uh, 80 82% of you um, have actually said that it's not about programming so yeah we have we have fairly an intelligent audience here 
and that's one of the myth right uh, you will agree to me that uh, that's a myth that data science is all about programming no it's not it's not at all uh, tools are enablers it enable you to do a job that doesn't mean that becomes the core part of the whole entire uh, learning process or entire uh, you know field why do you use tools just to simplify your work you don't want to use excel sheets in uh, excel is also a tool uh, but that has that, that has its own limitation but use some tools like python r sas what it does for you it allows you to manage that complexity in, you know in spite of doing it on yourself it has uh, user it has a particular user interface which will allow you to do some uh, you know write some uh, data driven or or uh, process driven or model driven or package driven right uh, codes sometimes you don't really don't need to write all the codes there are packages available in r uh, in sas enterprise model you have, it's a dra drag and drop model so it's not at all about programming i have uh, when i when i did my post graduation i got sas certified because that was the need of the company at that time but later on i got r i uh, you know did uh, uh, some study in python i learned big data i learned spoof flow multiple tools uh, has that changed my competency in terms of understanding the subject answer is no has that opened some of the new job roles for me answer is yes because some of the companies do expect that you should be very comfortable with tool data science is not a position where you can just go and deliver knowledge you need to actually do hands on you have to get your hands dirty to solve a problem tool will enable you to solve that problem i have another question for you uh, if navin you can you can open up the second question okay so uh, that is the science part guys right now we did talk about uh, this particular field already but some of you have joined a little late uh, so you can you can give me your response okay i think uh, this is not a secret we just discussed it right it can be applied across domains and functions some of you are still saying no uh, but yes it can be it is applicable across domains and functions uh, the core topics will not change a linear regression as a subject as a topic will never change if either you apply it in a retail or a banking or a manufacturing field the application of that particular modeling technique the interpretation of the result and the decisions what you will take will change so now you understand why it is both art and science right the science part sometimes will remain same in fact most number of times it will remain same with some tweaking around the you know the data anomalies what you are dealing with and the business is what you are working on but the art part will allow you to take some decisions now for one simple question which can be addressed with that uh, you know we are already at 40 minutes i'll finish it in next 5 6 minutes so that we can open up the questions uh, another field you know if you see if you're dealing in you know in, in a medical field an accuracy of 80% is good or bad it is fairly uh, decent not very good not very bad but if you're dealing with uh, you know retail store where you say that your sale will go up by 70% it's a fairly safe number to take so what is the business and what's the kind of uh, sensitivity you are dealing with that would also decide the application of it now let's move on to the other part how can you you know we ask you a question right uh, is the degree worth in data science or not uh, now this is a question to you all of you but i'll try to explain that what are the different you know programs by which you can acquire these skills one is uh, you know and all of these programs are university aggregated programs uh, let me so these are ugc approved programs offered by srm iisc chennai and uh, and uh, srm university ap so there is an mba in data science one of the unique programs right now which will allow you to specialize in business analytics and machine learning and artificial intelligence there are two different specializations what we are talking about either you can get into a business analytics specialization or you can want to get into a more technical role you can learn ml and ai so second is talking about uh, you know msc applied data science again it is offered by srm chennai it's again a degree program offered uh, for people who are bsc graduates and non engineer graduates okay the same program is also offered by ap now there are two sets of diploma programs what we do one is a post graduation diploma in applied data science another is in machine learning and artificial intelligence i'll quickly uh, you know walk you through with some of the intricacies of these programs 
1700 plus hours of learning this is the uniqueness of the program and what we am talking about these are the live lectures and this program can be offered in both full time classroom for people less than 2 years of experience who are willing to live up there you know give up their job or who don't have a job currently can take a full time classroom model people you know who have experience and they would not want to leave their job can also opt for a weekend hybrid model both of the candidates will get a same degree from the university you also get two months internship with a corporate partner for uh, the real life experience that's where the real learning will also happen right once you get a good amount of conceptual learning and some hands on at the college then you go to one of the companies for internship and then apply those concepts before you enter into the workforce uh it's a fairly you know as i said it's a very fairly hands on program 60% of the time you'll be working on projects we have partnered with harvard business publishing uh, for some of the learning materials and case simulations you will have ample number of assignments to test your uh, learning uh, how can you really evaluate uh, whether i have learned a particular topic or not so there are many assignments cases uh, and exercise which will help you to gain the confidence on that uh second is the msc program as i mentioned uh, you know offered by uh, both uh, chennai campus and ap campus uh, this is primarily for people who are non engineers and want to still enter into the uh, you know data science field uh, want to stay technical take the cto path and uh, want to work on some of the you know hardcore modeling uh, techniques uh, so you will learn some of the applications of uh, statistics computer programming machine learning and ai uh you know the the curriculum if you see uh, you know which you can find it in the website and you can ask one of our uh, reach out to us also to get the curriculum and and uh, the brochure but the curriculum is designed in such a way that it covers fairly extensive approach to both machine learning ai and statistical modeling right so uh, to, to all, all three segments are covered properly we also get a three month internship these are this is a two year program uh, offered in both full time and cla full time classroom and weekend hybrid Uh, again the same model what we follow uh, ample number of assignments you know cases which will again give you a lot more confidence when you enter into the workforce how can you take up this problem and solve it for the customer rather than just looking at a architecture level or architecture view uh, as i said this is again the the msc is also being offered at ap similar thing but it will come from srm ap now uh, these are the two diploma programs uh, where it's a short program of one year offered in hybrid delivery model it's not offered in a full time mode it talks about some of the data visualization natural language processing deep learning so it's one of the most comprehensive data science programs right now in the country it has its own flavor of uh, you know hands on of 70 30% plus and 30% of the time you will be doing uh, conceptual learning and this is the mlai diploma program so people who are looking to uh, who have some experience uh, in in working with data i would recommend them to go with the applied data science program people who have already done some level of uh, you know data analysis worked in bi field i would recommend them to go for the ml and ai program now uh, this is our uh, I, I'm, i'm sure you must be waiting what will i get out of this uh, if i do this uh, so we have a career next which is a you know more of a 360 uh, holistic view for job opportunities for career services we offer career planning resume building mock interviews career coaching internships and job search support so it's it's a it's an extensive platform it's not a it's not one of the transactional ways that you submit the resume i get you a, an interview and finish that i think it's a, the entire engagement will start from your semester 1 so as i said most of these are degree programs uh the, the first three which i explained offered in two four semesters it will entire thing will start from semester 1 uh your you know your personality development personal branding uh, some of the career coaching sen- sessions uh, organizing webinars uh, peer to peer networking industry talks a lot of the engagement uh, will, will happen at this platform okay i have some questions let me take it up uh, actually i have a lot of question uh, now i've answered uh, sarav's question now garvit is asking can students from commerce background get into data analyst Yes, of course. Uh, so as I said, uh, you don't need to be a programmer or an engineer to do data science. In fact, if you go and study, uh, Garvit, and see who are the top data scientists in the country, uh, there are multiple, uh, you know, ranking published by different communities. Uh, one of it I can name Analytics India magazine, where you go and study it. You will find it they don't have an engineering background. They really don't have an engineer. The top minds of data scientists in the country. 
don't come from engineering background that's one of the myth which we you know which, which uh, it's good that you ask this question that yes if you have a bcom background but if you if you are you know if you have that uh, you know i would say ability to understand and ask logical reasoning question because another job of a data scientist is to ask right questions because your clients may not understand that what is the data requirement for this particular problem statement you need to guide them and help them to understand as a you know as a data scientist that's your job role that you need to educate your client you need to mentor your client to say that this, this these are the things you need to do to solve this problem so asking the right question most number of times you know becomes very very critical as part of your roles and responsibilities and that is something you know will comes with your primary and secondary education your experience so to answer your question garvit yes you can enter into data science there are multiple ways as i explained to you earlier you know you can you can look for uh, you know mba programs uh, so there is a program in uh, mba in data science which you can definitely do uh, which will help you to enter into the field now gorav is asking need to learn any programming language uh, yeah you will have to uh, in fact that's very important uh, else you will you know you will not be able to scale another another application of data science is how can you operate at scale the only way you can operate at scale by you know by automating some of the redundant processes so tools will allow you to do that uh, most of the programs what i talked about you don't need any programming background all of it are covered from scratch so if you don't have any programming background you can and that's why the degree program is is very important right because it gives you a more comprehensive way of learning things there are ways by which i'm saying i can become a data scientist in 3 months i believe me you can't even become a data scientist after doing a 2 year program but will you be better with respect to others uh, who have uh, that, who, who makes that claim answer is yes you will be because it, it comes with experience but that 2 year will shape you what it what is required to do it on the job and then a lot of learning will happen once you enter in the job also so any degree program if you opt for it means you are taking that field very seriously you are dedicating your 2 year or if you take diploma program your 1 year to to showcase that there there is a there is a more you know uh, i would say unique method of of entering into this field rather than taking some of the common programs with you know certification model and plus degree is anyways good because whenever some of the job roles do ask for degrees uh, right you should have a msc or mtech or ms you know mba in data science to do this your certifications will become null and void at that point of time so it, it's very important uh, to uh, you know to to look into that aspect too uh now uh, novel is asking uh, okay i there, there are many participants novel so it's very hard to uh, unmute everyone uh, we don't have a moderator at this point of time but we'll keep this feedback in mind and next time we'll organize a session we'll have a moderator so you know he can he can manage the session uh Devasmita is asking: Is it necessary to know ML to work uh, on data analytics, or do I need to know ML and data mining warehousing components for working on BI concepts and feed? Okay, so you have mixed a lot of uh, you know some uh, you know heavy duty words. So let me let me break it down for you. BI is descriptive world, right? Which I just spoke about. What had happened? Where you learn with ETL tools, you learn with some of the data visualization tools. You work with databases. Uh, you don't really need to know ml if you are only working on bi okay but if you want to enter in the field of data science which is more about predictive and prescriptive but having said that descriptive is fairly important guys right uh, most number of times actually a data scientist does descriptive analytics but they also go ahead and do the next two steps and that's what you know differentiates it from the bi domain roles so you need to know ml and ai uh, i would say at least statistical modeling and machine learning concepts uh, to become a data scientist now akash is asking a person uh, doesn't have mathematics or programming background can enter into i think i've answered this question that's one of the myth right you know 82% of the time you have given the response that you don't need to have a programming background mathematics yeah a bit of mathematics i think when you learn statistics it's important that you understand few terms terminologies to it uh, again as i said most of the programs what i talked about uh you know there is no premise that you need to become you know a solid mathematician or or a statistician i am not trying to help you to become a statistician i am trying to make you a with the set of programs what we what we do we are trying to create the competencies in data science 
there will be bit of mathematics which will include statistics apply and that is also applied statistics so we you you take some of the applications of statistics to uh, for data exploration and data mining techniques uh now satyam is asking how to get into this field if you're a supply chain analyst yeah great question so sup, there are two spaces right um, one is a supply chain management another is supply chain analytics now supply chain management talks about starting from you know inventory planning understanding the lead time for to forecast to the warehouse to the retail and to the final distribution to the final last mile let's look at that now to do supply chain management you will use some level of data analysis you do not may not ended up using uh, uh, the again those machine learning and uh, statistical modeling technique but to do supply chain analytics where you want to optimize now if you are working in a company take an example of id uh, the, the the company which manufactures idli and dosa now what is the biggest constraint for them i think it's the shelf life right because those are perishable products uh, they cannot create it for 6 months and keep it and plus they have to distribute it to thousands of retailer uh, or maybe tens of thousands of retailer on a daily basis now for them supply chain analytics is very important why because they need to understand what is the optimal level of inventory i should ship it to a particular retailer now there are two problems what you are trying to solve one is over inventory another is under inventory now what are the repercussions of these things over inventory you are losing money because these are perishable products with a very lower shelf life period if you lose that money obviously it will hit your pnl now what is under inventory you are losing opportunity now if you do if you go to a particular store and you ask for id idli uh, uh, dosa once twice and uh, the shopper shopkeeper tells you it's not available that's a damage to your brand right that's a brand reputation problem and plus you are losing out a customer because next time he'll pick up the other brand and he'll be okay with that brand that's where the customer churn happens with the under inventory model both these problems can be solved by using supply chain in the, you know analytics so yes uh, satyam uh, that's entire section uh, supply chain analytics in fact that's one of the electives also what you can pick it uh, in our uh, msc and mba program which will help you to apply these techniques in supply chain field uh another question by navel uh, i'm having 10 years of teaching experience uh, handling physics subject uh, just one second guys okay uh is it a course to uh, worth to pursue online mode by quitting my job so if you have 10 years of experience i would definitely not recommend you to quit your job uh, i would recommend you to take it uh, you know in a weekend hybrid format which will allow you to continue with your job and also learn it so learn it while you uh, you know while you earn right so why to leave the job at that experience but if you are clearly make up your mind no i want to give my full time dedication for this you can uh, but you also need to understand that uh, you know, there, there will be some level of liabilities and responsibilities with you after that so we don't recommend people to leave job after 10 years but people you know for freshers less than 2 3 years of experience they can definitely opt for the full time model now uh, gorav is asking what's the difference between business intelligence and analytics so uh, business intelligence the entire world of uh, descriptive analytics now analytics itself cover three words to it descriptive predictive and prescriptive right so it's more of a subset what you can say you can do analytics in fact few years ago uh, uh, i would say when i was working there were two teams one was analytics team and uh, another was predictive team okay so the analytics team were doing uh, bi work you know, the same etl database and visualization working in tableau business objects and uh, you know other visualization tools the predictive team was responsible for modeling you know taking the data from the analytics team and and try to uh, forecast classify or optimize a problem statement for for the customers so that's the the key difference now akash is asking what's the average salary of business and as i said uh, depends on the experience level you are in any fresher can look for 6 to 8 lakhs of salary and these are average salaries by the way people with 3 to 5 years of experience can look at at around 12 to 20 lakhs uh, with more than 5 to 8 years they can go as high as 25 to 30 lakhs uh, and again these are average numbers uh, there are people who are making 30 plus lakhs also with 5 years of experience i know personally a lot of people with less than 5 year 4 year experience they are sitting at a salary of 25 30 okay uh 
Gaurav is asking, how can I re- relate with marketing? Interesting question. You know, marketing is all about. Uh, I think it's it's a lot of experimentation. Which what do you do, right? You you try to understand the consumer behavior, and you experiment few of the things. You know, also try some tested models, which have you know has given you results in the past. But marketing analytics all together is a is a separate subject where you learn two two major things. So marketing, what's more you know, important? How can you acquire? a customer and what is the cost of acquisition right so the cost of acquisition can be optimized uh, which you say uh, coa or coca or whatever term you use in marketing now the cost of customer acquisition can be optimized by using some of the budget allocation metric so you make a suppose you are working on a market mix modeling so what a market mix modeling does it will tell you how much of budget you need to allocate across channels uh, to optimize your you know your output right so to basically uh, make the maximum penny uh, what you spend right or get the maximum return from each penny what you spend so that's what you know you can do it in marketing so marketing analytics has customer acquisition problems customer retention problems market mix modeling is a very very traditional example and that's completely based on linear regression model which you do so that is how you know the applications are are widely used now funny is asking i am from bba finance uh, specialization can i opt for specialization for mba uh, yeah so this is a very personalized question funny yes uh, you can uh, but i would recommend you to give us a call so that we can understand your profile better i don't want to recommend uh, randomly a program to you we need to know little more about your profile and more about your aspirations and expectations and accordingly we can we can talk about uh, shortlisting a program uh which is uh, sorry i'm asking which is better masters in data science or diploma look so masters is a degree diploma is diploma i think it's a choice uh, what you need to make if you are willing to give your two years uh, you know it's a it's a good time commitment uh, and want to learn more comprehensive approach obviously degree is better and plus it's a degree program it's ugc approved so if you are looking for phds or if you are applying for a job where that's a requirement yes you can do it i think the second best choice is diploma right after degree uh, because of various reasons you cannot study for two years uh, you know you may not have time uh, you travel a lot or, or or various other constraints right the you know the affordability and all so then the next best choice is diploma uh, which you can take which is a one year program cover, covers you know it cannot it will not be as uh, depth in two years so it's obvious uh, but it will cover enough examples for you to still enter into the field so all of the programs what i talked about are complete are complete in its own way it doesn't mean that one is incomplete because it's one year another is complete because it's two year all the programs are complete on its own way it gives you you know those uh, defined learning outcomes but the expectations from each program would be different and it totally depends on what are you looking what are the choices you have at this point of time to to decide a particular program so a lot of discussion can happen offline on that sort of which you know again help you know reach out to our one of our career counselors they will understand and then they can help you with that now ji rajeshekar is asking i want to pursue marketing along with business analytics so what positions can i expect and role play so there is as i said the, there is an there will be an analytics team in the marketing function itself right their job is to understand whether am i doing my spending's right or not am i really investing my money in the right channels or not or what are the new channels i can i can explore uh, which can get me some results if i have to increase my top line by this particular percentage what my budget allocation what are the channels i need to look at what are the uh, you know kpis i need to build on so yes those are the kind of roles marketing analyst you know they call it the marketing analyst that's what they do uh, jack is asking efficient remarketing with already recaptured yeah so that's one of the things right because when you have access to data so uh, i would not say remarketing is an analytics technique it's a well known marketing field but uh, you know uh, but partially you are right jack uh, it adds value because when you have access to data you should be able to really make a lot more sense uh, out of it uh, by using these techniques or not just by the traditional approach what we have been doing uh, novel is asking can i get you my your contact number uh, okay so <laughs> we already have a number uh, you know you can reach out and call to that i think uh, i have put the email id here please send an email and uh, you know the team can connect with me separately so that we can have a chat 
okay great uh, uh, we have finished uh, by 8 3 3 minutes more what i have taken but if any more questions are there happy to answer no great so it was nice uh, you know talking to all of you uh, if you have any more questions you can mail us at admissions@gpeducation.org we'll be more than happy to uh, answer all the questions and give you any sort of career counseling required yeah, there is a survey going on uh, you can you can give your response okay thank you guys have a have a good evening take care stay safe